Hi guys, welcome back to the Morning Ride, US and UK version. Okay, it's not US and UK, it's just an uh, English version. Today I want to talk about uh, putting a price tag on, a, on an app, on a software, on a program. But before talking about this, I have to introduce you to how things work here in Italy and in Europe, because if you are from the US, you have a different per perspective. So, in Italy, August is a very, very, very slow month because uh, most of the people have holiday leave right in August, right in the two central uh, weeks in, uh, in August. That means that everything works for all July and then everything stops and then everything restarts uh, at the end of August. Today is uh, Monday, uh, August 28th and then everything uh, is returning to normality here in the Milan area. So this is very 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 true in Italy but it's almost true throughout Europe so here in Italy we have a vision of what happens during the, uh, the month of August uh, um, quite different compared to what happens uh, in other parts of the world okay I also had two weeks but they became two and a half uh, during August in which I took holiday leave and bring my wife and my child to the sea and uh, for seven days and for three days on a mountain okay just because i cannot answer to people when i'm uh, out of the office not because i don't have my macbook pro with me but because i have no time frame <laughs> i have no time slices to to do proper answering uh, i always say that august is a month in which i do not give much uh, proper support to my customers i apologize for this but my child is 10 months old and uh, it takes all the energy and the time from me and my wife. Love it or leave it. <laughs> and uh, so, given the fact that August is a slow month and uh, I cannot answer properly to my customers, I always prepare a summer sale for my apps. For two slash three weeks, I decide a discount from 20 to 40%. It depends on the app and the price tag of the app and I advertise it as much as I can through um, Twitter or X whatever you want to call it and my newsletter and uh, each time I do this kind of stuff I have a significant increase in sales let's say that sometimes the fact that uh, I reduce the price tag of my apps it brings to an increase of the uh, number of the purchases and you can say, okay, Alex, let's reduce all the price tags of all your apps. And so you will balance this with the number of purchases. And that is very, very wrong because each purchase has a cost for me. Because a certain amount of people, a certain percentage of people uh, purchasing my apps need support. And that's okay. But this support costs me time. And sometimes I need to investigate a lot on particular edge cases and so each purchase for me has a cost okay when an app is finished but they are uh, never finished each time I do a purchase it's something like a free money <laughs> because it's just a download and there's no uh, cost of shipping cost of packaging cost of manufacturing but there's a, a hidden cost because a percentage of people let's say 10 to 12 percent of the people buying something need support sometimes it's quite simple um, can you please me uh, send me the download link even if it's in the email or sometimes they say I have this strange video in uh, vertical format with diagonal <laughs> orientation at uh, 33.3 frame per second and it is slightly uh, not accepted by your app something like this and so you have to take a break from what I'm doing and then start processing the information and start uh, elaborating answers to this I try to be as fast as possible as as complete as possible to all my customers and so I'm not Superman <laughs> I try to be the best as I can and so let's say that uh, in average each purchase cost me some minutes, some tens of minutes uh, of my time. 
and then each purchase has a cost. And so if I double the purchases, uh, I, I double those costs. And if doubling the purchases, I reduce um, the price tag uh, by 50%, then it's not the same because I need more, more, more time. I have more cost. And so after this two weeks period, I return to the normal uh, price tag for all the apps. And this brings me to the final and more important question. How do you put a price tag on your app? You, you know, I created something like 15 apps in my store, maybe something more, maybe like 20, more or less. And except uh, Transcriber that is sold uh, directly and in exclusive uh, by FX Factory, I sell all my apps directly in my store using my licensing engine using a, a, an infrastructure that I build. And uh, let's say that 30% of my apps are repaying the, the, the production because 70% of my apps are losing money, are something like losing money because I spent something like uh, X month producing one app. And then I say, I, I do a little, little small calculation saying, okay, if I spend this uh, uh, amount of time on this app, it would be okay if I gain this amount of money from this app. And 70% of the times, or 70% of the apps, this, is, this isn't true. Those apps are a negative balance. The most fortunate apps and the most uh, successful ones uh, pays for the, all the infrastructure, all the, all the stuff. It's good, it's bad, it's the way it is. I prefer to do a lot of um, diversification because I don't want to focus on just one app because I, I produce this kind of stuff, uh, these tools for me, for my job of, as a TV commercial director and editor. So I need those tools. I need more tools. <laughs> in, my, in my head, I have at least uh, other six apps <laughs> that I would start developing. And then sometimes I have to choose, okay, let's focus on this one because it seems easier to, to do or focus to this one because it, it will be probably more successful. But in the end, putting a price tag is quite difficult because, uh, you know, I say that, okay, I built this app and I want to gain this amount of money from it. This is not something that uh, my customer can concern of because they don't give a, a duck <laughs> about um, what, uh, what an app costed me. They will give a duck about uh, what an app cost them and what, the, what is the perceived value of an app. If the perceived value is uh, equal or higher the actual cost of the app, they purchase it unless they try to steal it from <laughs> uh, some Chinese server. It happened. But I didn't answer to the real question. How do I put a price tag on an app? Well, when I started with my first app, FCPX Autoduck, that is still alive today, I put a very, very, very little price because I was so ashamed of my skills as a developer that I said to myself, maybe it's better that I give it for free because it's not perfect. The interface is uh, not perfect. Uh, there are uh, some bugs. There are a lot of edge cases not uh, uh, handled by the app. Even if I made it better and I increased the feature of the app and the compatibility of the app with uh, the newer version of uh, Final Cut Pro, today FCPX Autoduck still costs four euro and ninety nine cents. I think that uh, another developer could sell this for fifteen euro, fifty dollars. But uh, this is just me trying to not be uh, too much ashamed <laughs> uh, from the stuff that I do. And then I try to compare all the stuff that I do with this baseline of five uh, euros. And okay, if you think about something like uh, Producer or uh, Bitmarker Pro or uh, BatchBuddy EE, these are apps that are a hundred times more complicated but I cannot put a price tag of $500 on a, on a single app. And so I try to have a logarithmic curve. It's something that I try to decide with my art and not with my brain. And so sometimes I try to guess what is the perceived value of this app, given the fact that this app is developed by me, an Italian guy, 
who doesn't speak English very well, as you can hear me. And so the, the tutorial are not so beautiful, are not so good. The website is comply completely developed by me. And so it's less than sufficient. Uh, technical support is not so uh, snappy. I cannot answer in 10 minutes, uh, even if sometimes I do. The interface of, of the app is not so perfect uh, as it was developed by Apple. Uh, so I have to balance all this stuff and then to try to give the, the, the app the higher uh, price that I think uh, people can accept to pay for it. It's a difficult thing and sometimes it's quite impossible for me to, to have the right guess. And so I'd like to hear your comments because if you know me or if you know uh, Alt.media or if you know the app, the, the apps that I develop, what do you think about my prices and my price tags? Because a lot of people coming from the US say that my apps are very, very inexpensive or cheap. <laughs> uh, but, just, but this is because in the technical related areas of the US, something like $10 has the same uh, perceived value as two euros in Europe. You are five times <laughs> richer than us. And, and I live in Milan, that is the most expensive uh, city in Italy. The world is quite different. But if you think about Thailand or uh, South America or Central Asia, $10 are something like uh, much, much more. And so given the fact that I sell all around the world and I use uh, just one price tag in euros, because I am in the eurozone, then sometimes my app are perceived as very inexpensive in the US, in the UK, in the north of uh, Europe, and very, very, very expensive in the south of the world. So if you are a developer, what, what, how do you put a price tag on your apps? And remember, if you are a mobile uh, app the developer, this is a quite very, 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 very different market. It's a niche market because it's a market for desktop computers, for Mac computers, and for the apps that I develop are focused on uh, people who produce video and, uh, and audio, who works with Final Cut Pro and something like this. So it's quite, 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 quite a different market. I, I don't try to sell my apps to a million people. Yeah, maybe the market can be so, so big, but uh, I count my potential customers in uh, thousands, not in, not in millions. And so I have a very, very, very different uh, perception. And my apps are professional apps, are apps that can change or must integrate in the workflows of the professional people, and not for casual users. So this is very different. If you are a developer, tell me, please, in the comments, uh, let me know how do you put a price tag on your apps. Or if you're not a developer, you're a customer of me, please let me know if, what, uh, what do you think about my price tags? What do you think about my apps? What do you think about me? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, having feedbacks is always a, a thing that I love as a content creator and as a developer. <laughs> and so I talked uh, for too long. Sorry if I spend too much time doing blah, 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 blah about something that can be shortened in three minutes, but uh, this is me. <laughs> for the people who listen to, to me in, in audio, in my podcast, uh, I will do something like uh, an automatic translation of this uh, in Italian and have Azzurro, the digital speaker, uh, speak this uh, entire episode in Italian uh, with automatic translation. Let's see how it works. That's all for today. Thanks for watching me. Next time I will try to talk about the future of Final Cut Pro and if Apple still believes in it or, or not. Thanks for watching. Ciao.